so the computer will okay. tell the, the floor on the truck to move material in, and then once it gets in, uh, the material will be moved. This is more or less kind of the holding area. Yep. Before and it goes in. in winter, if we were to have this all full of our uh, densified material, we'd probably have two or three days worth of storage, depending on how fast we're in going. here. Okay. Yeah. And what it, this is providing energy for camp, or is it the heating and cooling This needs provides or? heating and cooling for heating needs anyway, 80% of peak demand. Okay. So in the middle of January, when it's just bitterly cold here, we'll have to rely on some of our natural mm -hmm. gas systems. Mm -hmm. But probably as your campus is, this has uh, got a redundant system so that if one goes down, we have other backup systems. Yeah, initially though, we did try just putting bales on here and there are some bars at the end that you know, we hoped would break them up, but it just didn't work. And so then we went to grinding material and putting it on here. And that didn't work. This is a main gas fire here. And you can see we've got that stuff in the bunker. Mm -hmm. It's moving this direction mm -hmm. and then dropping down okay. into the hydraulic ram. And then the ram is pushing it into the gas fire itself. So, uh, I think I, before I show you how to do these, these are our uh, student gas fires. So oh. we teach with these. Uh, for the last two years, we've taught classes, and then we have uh, students do projects mm -hmm. with them. Uh, in fact, I've got an intern who's finishing up this project now. And uh, these use all the same principles as a big gas fire, but. Uh, a little more manageable for students. Yeah, so. and I think this is what we're trying to get one up. I don't, oh, these are, I don't know if they're homemade here or, if um, they're or They can be homemade, but we get these from uh, All Power Labs in Chicago or in Sacramento. Okay. I believe. And uh, they sell they're about twenty five hundred a piece. Um, oh okay. Right now. Yeah. Now when this thing jammed, um, yeah, you can kind of see through this window, window. where there's a little stuff in there. But when this jammed, we literally sent a bunch of people in there to hammer it out because it was tight in there. We had replaced the cylinder a couple of times, upsizing it each time, and it just couldn't do it. And so now we've changed the fuel and that seems to work. Really fairly straightforward, you know, it's just how much biomass, how much air, and then how the two meet and interact. Um, so if you're getting a lot of air into your particles, they react faster. If there's more surface area con where air mm -hmm. can contact, they react very fast. That's why the fluffy material is actually a problem for us because this stuff reacts so fast, it causes problems. And we're also pumping air from underneath. Mm -hmm. And so it'll blow up and it'll act more like some of your pulverized coal boiler systems. The reactions are taking place so fast. You mentioned before the problem with the silica. Mm -hmm. That's going to take the place inside the gasifier itself. So yeah, if you, that's where you're getting too hot. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, the way we control the air is by the variable speed fan. Mm -hmm. We've got one there, and we've actually got one that pumps flue gas back in because if you're using the flue gas it doesn't have any oxygen mm -hmm. so it's kind of a filler air with no oxygen and it'll give you the right blend of oxygen in there. But, uh, we've got some different uh, fuel products here and we've got one of our some chopped up material here which is one of our tests. And that's the stuff you said is probably gonna that's the 50% grass? And well, the this this is actually all corn stove. Okay. That's what we tried first, and then we went to the 50% grass, and that seems to work better. So we've tried a lot of different uh, things. Mm -hmm. Here's an example of what happens when uh, it gets too hot. Yeah, that's slag. And that yeah. actually went all the way across, probably five feet across the inside. And Know, five or six feet down the, the grate and they had to chop they chopped it while it was still hot so it broke up fairly easily but you know that's a lot of work to get those out yeah.
And then as it's gasifying, the gas is going up and into the boiler and the ash is dropping out and it comes through these chutes here out and back to a wagon out there. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that we can get that back out on the field for the final sport. You won't see it on this side as much, but since it is a research project, we do have a bunch of temperature sensors on the other side. You can see there's the one up there, but on the other side there's about six more of them. So we test pressure and temperature there. And the whole system is really regulated by airflow and pressure, air pressure in there. And so uh, in the gas chamber itself, we keep a slightly negative environment. Mm -hmm. uh, the one time we didn't do that, we had little puffs of smoke coming out all over the place. But uh, it's just a, about, uh, I think, uh, a third of an inch of negative pressure. And then once we get the gas off it, starting up that duct, we have this fan here, which will add more oxygen. Okay. Once you add the, the secondary oxygen in there, it starts the combustion process. So they call this a close couple system because right after the gas fire, you start the combustion. There are a lot of gasifiers that do have quite a distance between where they use the gas and where they produce it. Now one of the things in there, you notice this space here, but there's also the space out there and that was designed for research and teaching. And already we've put in our first, uh, kind of our, our first advancement in the project or our phase two here, and that's in a uh, back pressure steam turbine. That turbine will take our boiler uh, Mm -hmm. and generate electricity with it. What we have here is that we have a boiler that will generate 280 pounds per square inch and then it goes out to campus at 15 pounds. And we use that difference in energy to generate about 320 kilowatts of electricity. And so whenever the biomass plant is producing, we can be using that. And that's energy for campus? Right well, away or does it honest, just go? Honestly, most of it goes back into the heating plant here. Okay. Just offsetting fans and equipment. Uh, one of the other things that we learned in this whole process is we took samples of corn stover to Illinois to a gasifier there to test out. And right away they told us there was a lot of chlorine in it. And that chlorine goes up the stack. And that's kind of a big problem because it uh, joins with hydrogen, finds free hydrogen or gets mm -hmm. hydrogen in there and forms hydrochloric acid. And so one of the things that we didn't count on that our uh, consulting engineers didn't tell us right away was that to mitigate that issue, we were going to have to have a large tank of 50% sodium hydroxide here. And so that's what this tank is. And we have to get deliveries a couple of times a year of 50%, which is like syrup. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's going on in there a little bit. Can you get up close, Kitty? Get in there if you want. But, uh, yeah, that's the grate, and it uh, goes back and forth, slowly push the material down. I see. That's another thing that we didn't really think about. The shape determines how fast it slides down. So um, bigger, chunky material that's prone to roll will probably roll down here, whereas a uh, you know, small, uh, chips and things tend not to roll as much and so we had to think about that now that we know a little bit more about the fuel mm -hmm. we're kind of having to consider things like that speeding up or slowing down those grates in there to accommodate whatever fuels in there so in addition to the turbine downstairs we uh, put in uh, an absorption chiller unit here uh, as part of the phase two and what we did was we used an energy services contract to do some of this work so we had an outside company put this in at their expense, but with the energy savings every year, they get a chunk of that money. Mm -hmm. and so we pay them off over time, and after a while, the system is fully ours. And so this, you can see the, the combustion air from the gasifier is coming through here. It's, it's got air on the other side of the wall, so it's combusting and it's going through, mm -hmm. and then it goes into the boiler. Okay. And the boiler system is, uh, uh, conventional boiler, the only difference is it has a much bigger opening because it needs that volume of throughput to get the energy 
to make the steam. Mm -hmm. Natural gas, you need a, just a small jet in there. Now, once it goes through the boiler, we have a set of tubes. There's a duct out there that, that ducts the exhaust out. And we have a set of sample tubes that bring samples into this box. Um, this is part of our USDA grant, which you put this in, and this monitors our emissions. So by law, we're not required to have this, but for research purposes, we thought it would be good to put this in. So we can monitor our nitrous oxides, um, sulfur dioxide, CO, CO2, and then our particulate matter. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we hope to be able to do is use our facility for companies that want to test materials or if we want to do tests on materials they can do it in our small system versus a big one mm -hmm. so that's what this allows us to do this is also meant to be hooked up to the web so that other people can see the data so if we are teaching a class or if we have some researchers who are doing a project here they can remotely access the information and that goes along with the cameras and some of the other data So I talked about the sodium hydroxide. We have a wet scrubber unit. So the, the flue gas is coming through and there's a, a mist that's sprayed into it. And that mist will attract particles and it'll attract the chlorine that's going through. And so what we do is we put in a small amount of sodium hydroxide. We've got a pH meter that regulates that. Mm -hmm. And then the water is sprayed in there and we produce salt is basically. Um, what, what the end product is. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a, a recirculating filter, and so we can send, a, you know, every once in a while, purge itself and send the material down the drain. 